G'day everyone, and welcome to our a lesson on electron energy level example questions. Now this is the graph which represents the energy levels that electrons are sitting at around the nucleus. And this graph is basically a straightened out version of this diagram. So there's the nucleus, and then we have n equals 1, the first orbital of the electron, n equals 2, n equals 3, and n equals 4, getting closer together as they go out. And of course these are, well they say in physics in year 12, dictated by how many wavelengths you can fit around that circumference. So this would be one wavelength, and then the next orbit up would be two wavelengths, so it would look something like this. This is one here, two there. So any time uh, the circumference of the orbital can fit an integral or whole number of wavelengths, you get an energy level at which the electron can sit. That's why on this graph over here, we only have specific energies that the electron can sit at. It's not as though there's a cloud of lines that fills up this entire graph. The electron can sit at n equals 1 or n equals 2, but it can't sit in between here at n equals 1.5. So there are discrete energy levels at which the electron can, can sit. For the electron to move up to a higher energy level, it has to absorb a photon and when it drops down from a high energy level to a low energy level, it emits a photon. And that photon, the energy of that photon is equivalent to the energy it has, the electron has lost, going from one, negative 1.5 to negative 3.4. Don't be put off by the fact these are negative energies because it's mostly like potential energy. You only really need to look at the changes in energy to figure out, say, the energy of the photons involved. So in this question, uh, we're going to ask when an electron decays from n equals 3 to n equals 1. That's the electron. What is the wavelength of the photon emitted? So the first thing we do is recognize the energy of this photon is going to be equivalent to the energy difference between n equals 3 and n equals 1. So delta energy is equal to, we'll say, negative 1.5, take away negative 13.6, which is equal to 12.1, and it's in electron volts. If the electron has moved down 12.1 electron volts in potential energy, the energy of the photon is going to equal 12.1 electron volts. And the energy of the photon, energy photon, is given by Planck's constant times speed of light divided by wavelength. Speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8. And Planck's constant here, because it's in electron volts, we say 4.14 times 10 neg 15 electron volt seconds. So the energy of the, the photon is 12.1. E photon, we'll leave the photon out, is equal to Planck's constant speed of light over lambda. We're trying to find lambda, so we'll get lambda by itself. Lambda is equal to Planck's constant speed of light over energy, which is equal to 4.14 times 10 neg 15 times 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 12 one. I'll calculate that now. I have 1.03 times 10 to the negative 7. And its wavelength, so it's in meters there. Let's work out The second part of this question, 
Say there was an electron sitting in the ground state. Whoops. Try and preserve my graph somewhat. So this time there's an electron sitting in the ground state down here. And it is struck by a photon of wavelength 8.87 times 10 to the negative 8 meters. Let's calculate either which electron energy level this electron ends up at or what is its final kinetic energy if it leaves the electron's uh, proximity. Sorry, if it leaves the nucleus's proximity. So first of all, what is the energy? So we'll figure out the kinetic energy or n equals something. What is the energy of this photon? Energy is equal to h c on lambda which is equal to, we'll get it in electron volts, 4.14 times 10 neg 15 times 8 divided by 8.87 times 10 neg 8, which comes to, I have 14 electron volts. If that photon had 14 electron volts, it means this electron is going to jump up 14 electron volts worth of potential energy. But it's only sitting at negative 13.6. So it's going to expend 13.6 electron volts of that energy, going to zero, and it's going to have 14 take 13.6, which equals 0 0.4 electron volts of energy left over when it leaves the proximity of the nucleus. And this will be the kinetic energy of the electron once it's left the nucleus. So Ek is equal to 0 0.4 electron volts. Now this region up here is known as the ionization level. And what it's basically saying is if an electron receives so much energy that it, bec that it moves above this energy level here, it effectively leaves the atom. And we know that when we have, say, sodium, and the electron then leaves the sodium. So here the electrons within the sodium, and here le the electrons left the sodium. The atom is left in a positive charge state, and this is the ion. So the ionization level is the level of you've got to bump that electron up to to actually get it to leave uh, the atom. Moving to our next question. Okay, here we go. We have an electron decaying from the n equals 4 energy level. So this is known as the ground state, n equals 1. This is known as the first excited state, the second excited state, and n equals 4 is the third excited state. So the electron has been bumped up to that third excited state, or n equals 4, by perhaps some photon. And now it's decaying. So it's dropping back down the energy levels. It's apparent that the electron can drop down like that, because that's the same path it took when it moved up. But it can also drop down like that, or like that, or, have I got them all? Like that. There are a number of ways it could drop down. And each of these drops, uh, it takes, it releases a photon. Let's find the shortest wavelength photon that is emitted and then we'll find the longest. So the first thing we recognize is that the energy of the photon is equal to hc on lambda. If lambda is small, the shortest wavelength, then the energy of the photon emitted will be high. And the highest energy of our photon emitted 
occurs when we have the biggest drop in energy. So from negative 0.9 to negative 13.6. And I have that as a delta E of 12.7 electron volts. The difference in energy between n equals 4 and n equals 1 is 12.7 electron volts. And that must be equal to hc on lambda. Getting lambda by itself equals hc on 12.7. Since our energy is in electron volts, we're going to use the Planck's constant associated with electron volts, that's 4.14 times 10, negative 15 times 3 times 10, 8 over 12.7, which is equal to 9.78 times 10, negative 8. There we go. Now in terms of the longest wavelength, well, if the wavelength is incredibly large, it means the energy of the photon that was emitted was very low. So looking for the largest wavelength, we're actually looking for the lowest energy photon. And the lowest energy photon will be released when the electron jumps down the smallest gap between any two of these energy levels. Now the energy levels get closer together as you go up. So the two closest energy levels are going to be n equals 3 and n equals 4. And the delta energy I have the difference between negative 0.9 and negative 1.5 as 0.6 electron volts. And that is the energy of the photon, which is equal to Planck's constant speed of light over lambda. So rearranging to get lambda by itself, we have hc on e, which is equal to 4.14 times 10 neg 15 times 3 times 10 8 over 0.6 which comes to 2 times 10 neg, neg 6 times 10 neg 6 meters. So the shortest wavelength is on the order of 10 to the negative 8 and the longest wavelength is on the order of 10 to the negative 6. So there's a, there's a huge variation in the, in the wavelength of photons that could be emitted. And that clues you into the idea that we could get colors maybe in the visible spectrum, but also colors, well, this is a longer wavelength. That would be the, perhaps the ultraviolet spectrum. So we can get photons all over the spectrum being released when an electron decays from a high energy level.